<laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Of course. Oh, look, George. This is a photograph of the first time I ever saw you. You were swinging back and forth in the jungle. <laughs> Remember, George? This is George. He lived in Africa. <laughs> he was a good little monkey and always very curious. George was always very curious. And of course, he was curious about what was in the bushes. Uh oh. What a nice little monkey. I'd like to take him home with me. Hmm. Aha. I'm not going to hurt you. Well, well, well. You look like a nice fella. I never saw a seagoing monkey before. George was sad. But he was still curious. Well, wait. You're gonna fall out. On the big ship, things began to happen. George, I'm going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You'll like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble. George promised to be good, but it's easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. Oh, right. Wait. 
let's pull him in. Oh, the poor little guy. It's George. He sure swallowed a lot of water. No, no, George, you're all right. Bye-bye, <laughs> Captain. It was a nice trip. Thank you for sailing with us. George, let's go home. This way, George. Well, they're a little big, but they'll do. Off to bed you go. Good night, George. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. Yeah, I have a George watched him. He was fascinated. Yeah, what, can we come by and visit? Oh, George was curious. Thank you. He wanted to telephone, too. Hello. Hello. A fire station. Hello. Are you who? Anybody there?
isn't any fire. It's only a little monkey. You fooled the fire department. He did it. He did oh, it. Catch he him. Did it. Catch him. 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 from there. Come on down from there. Quickly and quietly over the guard's head, George walked away. He was free. There you go, little girl. You'll be very happy with that. George was curious again. He must have a bright red balloon. Look at the monkey. My balloon. the money for the balloons. And then the man with a yellow hat took George to his new home, the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. <laughs> That's right, George. You remember. The hospital and Dr. Baker. <laughs> you were very sick. This is George. He lived with his friend. The man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. Today, George was curious about the big box on the man's desk. What could be in it? He simply had to open it. It 
was full of funny little pieces of all sorts of shapes and all sorts of colors. It looked like a piece of candy. Maybe it was candy. Maybe he could eat it. Before he knew it... Oh. A while later, the man with the yellow hat came home. Why, George, I see you've already opened the box with the jigsaw puzzle. It was supposed to be a surprise for you. Well, let's get to work on it. Finally, the puzzle was finished. Well, almost finished. One piece was missing. The man looked for it everywhere. That's strange. It's a brand new puzzle. Well, it can't be helped. Maybe we'll find it in the morning. Let's go to bed now, George. The next morning, George did not feel well. He had a tummy ache and did not want to eat his breakfast. The man was worried. He went to the telephone and called Dr. Baker. Dr. Baker said he would be over as soon as he could. First, Dr. Baker looked down George's throat. Then he felt his tummy. Then he took out his stethoscope and listened. I'm not sure what's wrong. You'd better take George to the hospital and have an x-ray taken. Don't worry, George. You've been here before when you broke your leg. Remember how nice the doctors and nurses were? The nurse took them to a room where she gave George something to drink that looked white and tasted sweet. It's called barium, George. It helps the doctors tell what's wrong with you. In the next room stood a big table and a doctor who was wearing a heavy apron. He gave one just like it to the man. George was curious. Would he get one, too? No, he didn't. You get on the table, George. I'm going to take some x-ray pictures of your insides. George, hold your breath. Now you may get up. And we'll have the x-rays developed right away. Now, let's see. There's something there that should not be. Why, that looks like... I think that must be the piece that was missing in our jigsaw puzzle. Well, well, well. At least we know now what's wrong with our little patient. George will have to stay at the hospital for a few days. They'll put a tube down his throat to get the piece out. It's only a small operation. I'll call a nurse and have her take you to the admitting office. Many people were waiting outside the office. George had to wait, too. Look, Betsy. There's Curious George. Betsy had never been to a hospital before. She was scared. Finally, it was George's turn. A nurse wrote down a lot of things about George, his name and address, and what was wrong with him. Another nurse put a bracelet around his wrist. It has your name on it, George, so that everybody knows who you are. My name is Carol. I'm going to take you to your room now. We call it the children's board. There will be lots of children to keep you company. 
And so there were. There were lots of children in the room. Some were up and around. Others were in their beds with a doctor or a nurse looking after them. Dave was having a blood transfusion. Steve had his leg bandaged and was in a go-kart. Betsy was in bed, looking sad. George was glad when he was in bed at last. His tummy was hurting again. I have to leave now, George. I'll be back first thing in the morning before they take you to the operating room. Nurse Carol will tuck you in when it's time to sleep. As he promised, the man was back early next morning. The nurses were keeping George very busy. One nurse was taking his temperature and feeling his pulse. One nurse brought him a pill. This is to make you sleepy, George. And another was getting ready to give him a shot. It's going to hurt, George, but only for a moment. <laughs> the needle hasn't touched you yet. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, it really wasn't. And anyway, it was over now. By the time the attendant came to wheel him to the operating room, George was getting sleepy. He tried hard to stay awake because he was curious to see what would happen next. In the operating room, there was a big table with bright lamps over it and doctors and nurses all around. They had caps on their heads and masks over their faces. Only their eyes were showing. Dr. Baker was there. He looked funny with his mask on. Don't worry. Everything and soon fine. George was fast asleep. When George woke up, he didn't know what had happened. He didn't even know where he was at first. George. It's all done, George. They got the piece out. In a day or two, you'll be running around again. George felt sick and dizzy. His throat was hurting, too. We'll let him sleep. The more he sleeps, the better. The next morning, George felt better. Dr. Baker came to see him, and of course, the man came, too. Betsy was watching him from time to time. She seemed a little less sad, but she still didn't smile. Tomorrow I can get up and try to walk. Boy, I can hardly wait. The next morning, George was well enough to go to the playroom. A lady was showing Betsy how to use finger paint. There were all sorts of things to play with. There was even a puppet theater. And that was just the thing for George. He had four hands, so he could handle four puppets at the same time. George gave a real puppet show. children laughed and shouted, and even Betsy, for the first time, smiled a little. There were other things in the playroom, a TV set and a record player. George was curious. If he climbed on the record player and turned the switch, would it go round and round like a real merry-go-round?
The children cheered. George was so funny. <laughs> That's enough for now. You'd better take a nap before lunch. We have a big day ahead of us. The mayor is coming to visit the hospital today. And later on, you'll be going home, George. When George woke up from his nap, Steve was just taking his first steps. The go-kart was standing there empty. George was curious. It was. George broke all my dishes. And he broke the go-kart, too. What will the mayor think? Huh? <laughs> Suddenly, everybody looked up and listened. From above came happy laughter. And there stood Betsy. Then the children joined in. And a couple of others. <laughs> the mayor started laughing. And finally, everybody just laughed and laughed. Everybody, that is, except George. Don't be sad, George. The whole thing was so funny. I never laughed so much in my whole life. I'm so glad you were in the hospital with me. I'm sorry this happened, Mr. Mayor. George, you've made a terrible mess. But you've also made our sad little Betsy happy again. And now I see your friend has come to take you home. <laughs> Goodbye, George, and take good care of yourself. George was curious. Well, who wouldn't be? There was the piece of the puzzle that had caused all the trouble. How nice of the doctor to save it for us. And now we can finish the puzzle. It's time for bed, George. George, it's late. Time for bed. Come back here, George. George! Come on, you little rascal. <laughs> it's time for bed. Come back here. 